Hey everybody, welcome to Local Business Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Case, and I'm on a mission to help you. Every week we're gonna be talking to local business owners and experts to get their best tips, tricks, and hacks to grow your business. This show's designed to teach you, inspire you, and motivate you to take massive action and start to build your future-proof business. Whether you're just starting off or you're taking your existing business to the next level, this episode is for you. So let's get started. Hey, local business hackers. I'm your host, director of global business development of Referizer. Joined today again from a very dear friend, Stephanie Bro Bradley from Bro Bradley Consulting. Stephanie, welcome back to Local Business Hacks. I'm so excited to have you. I mean, waking up this morning knowing that this was on my to do list just made Monday all the better, Carl. It's twofold. You feel me? Twofold. 100%. <laughs> I'm really excited for you to get back on. For those of you listening, Stephanie is a wealth of knowledge and experience in boutique fitness and in this world. Stephanie, please tell people why I give you this credibility, what you do, (laughs) and how can people get involved with you personally? Thank you for that. Came from the corporate financial world and fell into, which a lot of people, because in this industry, we're mostly women-owned no offense, Carl, came into it quite honestly, becoming a mother, giving up the financialness, needing to find something for myself. And so I owned my own boutique bar studio and felt like I was finding my groove probably year three and a half and decided to go through breast cancer and divorce at the same time because it's always my thing not to half-ass anything. And through that was able to sell my studio in three weeks. And it was hard. I wasn't ready to do it. It was hard to let it go. But obviously, the universe and Jesus had other plans. And so I kind of fell into consulting when I had people approach me and ask me, can you tell me everything that you know about the business? And quite frankly, through that exercise, I could help them more with things that I look back upon that I wish I would have spent more time on, I would have done differently, or I would have reached out to help me in expert areas that I personally didn't know a lot about. And it was through that and the love of fitness and finance that I fell into this. And I got to tell you, I'm loving every second of it. The different perspective that you see, a lot of my clients laugh at me because I'll come up with something. We'll talk about new marketing ideas. and like, that's a great idea. And I'm like, I know it is. I wish I would have come up with that shit when I own my own business. <laughs> so it's just this different perspective that you see and all of the industry knowledge that you can gain from people like you. And you run in these circles, just seeing it from a different level that I've really enjoyed doing. Amazing. And Stephanie, I'm going to add some credibility to you. Obviously over here at Referizer, we have tens of thousands of my body customers globally. You are a mind body consultant. In mm-hmm. addition to helping people with, other softwares, best way for people to get involved, brobradleyconsulting.com? Yep. Well, I'm on LinkedIn. The website can send you everywhere. There is a complimentary coffee and conversation. If it's late in the day and you need Bloody Marys, and I'm not really good with alliteration, thinking of another B word really quickly. But for me, it's all just about the connection. Because I will tell you, MindBody has a handful of certified consultants, and we are very supportive of each other. And so being able to be in that atmosphere helps the work kind of unfold and develop even more because we use each other as a resource. So it's kind of all about connecting with the personalities. And most of us will, if we don't know the answer, we'll find it from someone that we do. I have this group, funny enough, it's called the Collab Crew. And it's a group of us consultants. And I liken us to Ocean's Eleven. It's kind of like, okay. I need to figure out in this system, how can I find this and take out this and get my client exactly what they need? Because as we know, all point of point of sale systems are great in a myriad of things. And then there's some things that you want to pull your hair out with. And that's across the board. So they laugh when I make that reference, but I'm like, okay, you get the dynamite. You have the walkie talkie. I have the rope. They're driving the car. Let's figure this out. So it's a great group of people who's Head and heart is all in the right place of helping the studio owner who's been through a lot. Yes. And if you're (laughs) lucky enough to listen to this podcast before opening your studio, it's always best to get started with a consultant before you're already drowning. Yeah. It's to the topic that we're doing today about communication. 
everything in fitness or at least the studios that I deal with and work with is emotional. Oh yeah. And I think we forget that sometimes it's emotional. And so there's always a place for automations for what that needs to look like to make your business more effective and efficient. But my personal opinion is nothing can substitute communication, human communication, person to person. Agreed. And I think we get all caught up in because a lot of the things that I've been dealing with with my clients and different other partners that I work with is a big thing about sales. You know, we're coming off of COVID. We need more sales. People are trying to get their businesses up and running again. And I think sales sometimes can have a negative connotation to it if you call it sales. And so I've spent a lot of time with my clients going, how do you know what to recommend? How do you know if this is your person? How do you know if this is the client you want to work with unless you have a conversation? So just have a conversation and get to know that person. Amazing. Stephanie, you did just give some hints as to what we're going to talk about today. So listeners, did I take your, did I take your wind away from you, Carl? Not at all. My, my ego is in a good place today. I wanted to have Stephanie on the show, obviously for an excuse to see her and talk to her. But outside of that, there's been a lot of conversations that I've been recently having with brands in both of our spaces in regards to what happens when a lead comes in and how they're being mm-hmm. treated. And Mm -hmm. when we look at five years ago, even a year ago, how leads wanted to be communicated with or expected to has completely changed. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear from you and I'll chime in also as to how are you coaching your clients through this evolving change of client customer expectations Mm-hmm. a origination standpoint. And what I mean by that is lead comes in from Google versus meta or an, an organic grassroots marketing campaign. How are we handling these clients differently today? And what are some of your top tr- tips and tricks to really infiltrate that person and make them feel welcomed when they've never stepped foot in your business? before? Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of things to unpack here first. I think, first of all, Five years ago, you didn't have a boutique fitness studio. Every, you know, go in a strip mall and it's like three of them. (laughs) So the whole idea of boutiqueness was new. And I don't think you had to really worry about generating leads. Like people were all excited about going in someplace and the the treatment that they got. It was more one-on-one versus something that was big box and you were a number. Not dissing the big box because I too can be that person where I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to go get my workout done type of thing. So I think that has changed immensely when it comes to leads. And I also feel like you have to look at the person, the generation, how they like to be communicated, how they're going to hear from you. And that takes some time to at least put that together. Here's what I mean about it. I am 51 years old. Exactly. I'm going to scream my age from the rooftops. I'm here in the South with a lot of humidity, so we don't need as much eye cream because there's no humidity. If you guys well, you aren't have- watching this on YouTube, get on YouTube and see that Stephanie's full of it because there's no way she's 51. If you are, you might have to share your beauty secrets at the end of uh, That's another one. This uh, that's another one. So for instance, a 27-year-old is going to want to be communicated differently than a 52-year-old woman. Will that take some time to kind of figure out what that nuance looks like? Yes. But I think, go ahead. Does the 51-year-old want to verbalize that they want to be different than the 27-year-old, though, is my question. It depends on their mood. Okay. It depends on their mood. Because like we said before, this is emotional, and you can't tell me that there's not a little bit of self conscious intimidation when you walk into a new space. Oh yeah. That being said, someone is coming to your space, looking at you as a professional to be led through the process. Thus the word lead. So do that. When you get a lead, whether it's from Google, Facebook, whatever that looks like, I think it's important to establish first how they like to be communicated. Over the phone, 
text, email, coffee, what is it that you're going to hear what I'm going to say? And I think it's very important to listen to that because you need to meet to that person where they are in communication, just like you need to meet them where they are when it comes to level of exercise and what that looks like. One thing that has become very clear to me with my clients, when I was a studio owner, anytime a lead came in, my sole focus was one direction. I'm going to get you to come into my studio and become a full member. Auto pay all the time kind of thing. And when you think about it, is that how relationships happen? No. And this is a relationship business. So there needs to be a cadence to what the communication looks like, asking questions, seeing what their activity is. And so maybe it would be a better idea to lead them according to their activity goals and what they're communicating to you to something that is a lower tier so that they feel successful. Again, back to the emotion. A good friend and partner of mine that I do business with, Chris Epia, brought up a good subject when he was on a webinar last week. And it was the first time I thought about it. When you're having a conversation with someone, you have no idea what's going on for them in their own side. Are you the only support that they have on this fitness journey? They could have people laughing at them. They could have people going, you're never going to do it. They're going to have people going, yeah, like the three other programs you tried and that you left two weeks after. You have no idea what kind of support or non-support that person is getting. Therefore, you need to be that for them. So they might require more time to think about it, but keep showing up. The whole community aspect, I think is huge also. I mean, I know the place that I go for a workout, but I also go to fill that cup of what I need to keep moving forward. And so I think anything that you can do in your place of business to either promote community or to promote team challenges or whatever that looks like. A lot of the clients that I work with, how... The, gate, the floods are going to open up when kids finally go back to school is have an open house and have like a team challenge right after. Get people to meet each other. Get them to form that bond and that relationship for the accountability purposes. I do feel it's important also to mention, since we're talking about what to do with a lead and they come in and let's just say they buy a package and they're starting what their membership journey is, don't forget about them. Don't forget about them. And also, I think a studio owner, when it comes to leads, if they can create this amazing circle of trust from the front desk person finding out the information, whether it's over the phone or somebody walking in about that person and leading that person to the instructor and maybe giving them a couple of tidbits to make it personal, that the instructor is now the authority because they're going to lead them through what exactly they're exactly there to do. And then after that, the instructor brings that person back to the front desk based on everything we talked about. Can you go ahead and set them up? They want to come three times a week. And you've created this amazing structure where nothing is being dropped through the cracks. But it's, I don't want to say that it's hard to do, but we all know to have everything working on all cylinders all the time is something that always needs to be tweaked, monitored, fostered and developed. But I think if someone comes into your studio and they see, A, they have my back, they communicate with each other, it can only bode well for them staying with you longer. And Carl, if you do all of this groundwork when it comes to nurturing the lead and having the system all make sense and spending time with them after they've become a member, what do you think that retention is going to look like? Through the roof. Mm Mm-hmm. And then you get referrals too, Mm -hmm. which is the best compliment that your customer can give you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Public relations, good deal. So I have another suggestion for those people who are not verbally inclined. Um, A good friend of mine, her name is Christina Vance, and she owns Rise Collective Studio in Colleyville, Texas. A few people are ever there. She did this amazing thing, and she has like a picture wall in the bathroom in the locker room. So we all know that there are those people that probably aren't as extroverted as Carl and I, and talking about themselves is not that comfortable, but for them to then have visuals to kind of show the community and show what they do, not in an exercise where they look like a 10 and everybody's like, oh my God, my intimidation factor just went up because I can't do that. 
they're like at a coffee shop on the beach at the retreat, um, having a cocktail at your Christmas VIP event, whatever that looks like. And we don't need to go the reasons why you're in the bathroom longer, but like this creates the time for you to kind of see what it's all about. You're not just speaking it, you're showing it and having them hopefully stay long enough to feel it. And they'll feel it. Yep. That emotion is real. Yep. Knowing not every person is going to be your client and that's okay. Because I will tell you from a woman's standpoint, a lot of times when somebody chooses to leave a facility, let's just say they've been a good member and they choose to leave. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with them. They might need a change of scenery for whatever it is that they have going on in their life. Make it easy for them to leave so that you make it easy for them to come back. Yep. Show that you understand, show that you appreciate the time they spent, show them that the door is always open for whatever they need. And the iced tea and the Bloody Mary will be waiting for you when you come back. Because you have no idea, like we said at the beginning, who's supporting them. You have no idea what's going on for them on the outside either. It's amazing. Stephanie, before I ask you the next question, I'm going to tell everybody, hit subscribe to Local Business Hacks podcast. If you haven't already checked it out, I was a guest recently on my own podcast. And (laughs) you can hear my story. So hop on to localbusinesshacks.com, hit subscribe on whatever channel you listen to us on and check out Stephanie on YouTube. Thank you. For Wait that. a minute. Did you ask the questions to yourself and then no. answer them? Okay. I, uh, I need to go listen to this. Yeah. One of my teammates that I've worked with for a long time now, Mia was the host and it was a very, very cool experience. Nice. I Definitely can't wait to look at that one. Yes. Yes. Transitioning a little bit onto we're coming in third quarter yep. of 2023. And you touched on it a little bit, the rush of. Yeah. The fall. Mm -hmm. But what about the stillness of the summer? You know. Okay. This is a good one. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like the stillness of the summer should create an opportunity for you to take a good look at what you have going on that's working and what's not working. You can't force people to come in. And I'm sure that they want to, but they've got three kids. They've got camps. They've got all this other kind of stuff. And obviously making that as accommodating as possible is a great idea. But at the same time, so is revamping your processes. Like what you're going to do when your leads come in, having a conversation with your staff, evaluating your staff, hearing from them on what they feel like is working, is not working, creating series, whatever it is that you want to do to prepare yourself. When the rush comes in, because I personally feel that the most important thing you can do when that rush comes in is to be present. And believe me, I know as studio owners, we go in there with an intention and then the dryer breaks and the chatty client comes in and we have to talk to them all the time and all of that kind of thing. But I feel like maybe the universe is giving you time just to kind of take a look at what's working and what's not working. Research, ask for help, put it in place so that your processes can run and that you can be seriously present for the conversations you want to have. Yeah. You only get one shot at these people. Sometimes you get a gift and another chance because they're really dying for your gym, but Mm -hmm. I don't see that often anymore. So make it count. Uh, And whether people like your modality or don't like your modality, there's no reason for you not to be authentic towards them. Yeah. And I would also challenge you I've had a lot of studios that I'm dealing with now who are now having some time to really dig into a referizer type of, um, if it's not referizer, if it's someone else that they choose to use because they realizing they're not utilizing it to a hundred percent that they could for all that the software can do for them. And I think that's the case in a lot of things. Yep. I agree. And gives you a chance to analyze all those numbers like you were talking about to see, because this is the best time to make any changes that you need to. And you could not, find out you could find out that you could be more profitable with less classes and your payroll goes down and your classes are full and the community is there and the engagement is there and taking a look at all what that looks like. That was a great tip. That was a say that one more time, Stephanie. I think that was I'm 50 tip. I'm 51. My memory's not there. You might have to repeat it. <laughs> Uber valuable. If if your class you, you know, one way that you can condense your numbers is really analyzing your class times. Revenue by class, revenue by client. Go find those two numbers. 
And then you will know because we talked about, I know that we're all over the place, but I love this part of talking with you is you don't know what you don't know. And the numbers are going to paint a picture for you to be able to make a business decision, not an emotional one. And I say that because I had a class at 1030 in the morning that I had these three lovely ladies, mature women that would come all the time. Three was not my number to be profitable. (laughs) Yet, emotionally, I felt like I needed to keep it on the schedule for them type of thing. And I think this is where, whether it's an outside manager, an outside consultant can help you see things because it's like, girl, if you run a business with just three people in the class and it's not profitable, how long do you think you're going to stay around type of thing? And keep in mind, because I have a lot of studios who are like, oh my God, I need to change the schedule because so-and-so asked for something. I was like, when's the last time you visited a space and you said, you know what? Your schedule doesn't work for me. So I'm going to tell you what I need. That doesn't happen. No. You figure out what works for you for the business and people will follow that lead. Amazing. Stephanie, before we wrap up, I want to ask you a question that I didn't get to ask you when we first had you on the podcast. Alabama sucks. I got to bring that into this. I will congratulate LSU just the won LSU another Tigers. championship. Yep. Yes. I, I will congratulate the LSU Tigers on their baseball win. And track and women uh, baseball, women's basketball, gymnastics, track. Roll tide. <laughs> Moving on. Stephanie, before we wrap up, I gotta ask you a question. You know, I've been a digital nomad now for four years. Mm-hmm. and you service clients all over the world. What are some ways that you stay sane while working in your house all day? I take breaks. I have recently started working with a life coach awesome. to listen to my nervous system and what it's telling me. And the reason why I say that is because when you're in this business and And we all know when we get started and it's like, okay, I just want business. And sometimes there are relationships that it aren't aligned and the nervous system comes up. And so I'm starting to pay attention to that a little bit more because maybe it's just not a fit and I can't add value so that I should steer them somewhere else. I also realized that my most productive time is 10 AM to 2 PM. And that in order for me to be at my best during that productive time, I need to work out before then. Awesome. So I think paying attention to your body, paying attention to what it looks like for you to be most productive and add value. Because I know when I spin my wheels and I'm not adding value, I'm just getting more aggravated. But yes, I think the whole like mental fitness aspect that we're all going down and that you preach to the people that you want to come to your place of business. I think you need to take some time for yourself to do that. Amazing. Stephanie Pro Bradley, everybody. Stephanie, thank you for being you, for shaping the the way that the fitness industry is today and for really caring about your clients. It's I'm blessed to be your friend. You know what? I can say the same for you. You bring such excitement and alignment to this business that it's always fun to talk to you. It's always fun to listen to what you have to say, because not only are you charismatic, you know what you're talking about, dude. Thank you. It's hard to be cute and smart all at the same time, don't you think? (laughs) I greatly appreciate it. It's it's got its challenges sometimes. Um, I wear the crown well. (laughs) BroBradleyConsulting.com, everybody. Follow Stephanie on LinkedIn, Stephanie Bro Bradley. It is spelled the Louisiana way, so it's B-R-E-A-U-X. Don't ask me why. Um, Stephanie, I'm sure we'll have you again, and thank you for being my second guest on the podcast twice. I greatly appreciate it, and we're, we're so excited to continue to follow you over here at Referizer. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Carl. Thank you so much. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to head over to our site, local-business-hacks.com to check out the show notes and send me questions or ideas for future episodes. If you want to grow your business, just like the people you've heard from here, follow Local Business Hacks podcast and tune in for new tips, tricks, and tactics. Until next time, thanks for listening and keep hacking.